class is in session. Poppin' while go on YouTube and welcome back for those of you who are already part of the gang. For those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Kiara Selena. I am a licensed practical nurse, and on my channel, I mainly talk about nursing and health, but we also do a bit of beauty, vlogging, and lifestyle. So if you're into any of those things, don't miss out. Join the gang by banging on that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell. That way, you'll be notified whenever I post future content. So, as mentioned in the title in today's video, we are going to be talking about all the things your parents probably did not tell you and maybe will not ever tell you honestly i my mom never had any of these talks with me i kind of just had to figure things out as i grew and a lot of you guys out there are probably gonna be going through the same thing depending on the parents that the type of parents that you have and especially probably if you have african or caribbean parents they tend to stay away from those kind of conversations so i as your favorite nurse once again and as your big sister i'm gonna talk to you guys the way i would talk to my younger self and my or my little sister. We're gonna be talking about all the TMI stuff. So sex, periods, condoms, yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, odors, everything you need to know is going to be in this video. And if it is not, then as usual, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section and I will be more than happy to help you out or maybe one of the viewers can also answer your questions. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Number one, and this is very basic, but using the wrong soaps can cause you a yeast infection. Now, for those of you who don't know what a yeast infection is, it's that itchy feeling that you get down there. So if ever you just start itching down there, and I don't mean like one or two little itches, I'm talking if it's persistently and consistently itching for days, you probably have a yeast infection, which can be caused for different things. I have different videos explaining the causes and the symptoms of yeast infection. So go check those out if you wanna know what causes it. But overall, it's just an overgrowth in um, bad bacteria down there and it can be caused for a number of different things such as using the wrong soaps use um, wearing clothes that are too tight all the time so super tight underwear super tight jeans super tight shorts all summer the cookie needs to breathe and if you are not letting it breathe and if you are putting the wrong types of soaps that are filled with chemicals that are harsh and that are not gentle it can irritate the area and cause an overgrowth of yeast and cause a yeast infection which will make you itch like crazy so if you are itching down there if you think you may have you may have a yeast infection go check out my playlist down below and yeah learn a little bit more about that and if you have any additional questions you guys can reach out to me on instagram but yes using the wrong soaps and super tight clothing can cause a yeast infection so take a break yes i know i've i've got a message from 13 year old girls telling me they've been using irish spring their dad's irish spring no dove unscented okay get rid of those bad so thing i want to tell you guys is that discharge is normal and i got a lot of messages also from um girls who are telling me that you know they they have a lot of discharge and they don't know if something is wrong with them i just want to let you know that discharge is normal now it depends on the quality it depends on the smell it depends on the color but if you are just having regular just white discharge it is normal because that is your vagina's natural way of cleaning itself out and also a lot of women tend to have a lot more discharge during ovulation which is that period of time where you are the most fertile so um yeah discharge is normal it is normal for you to have discharge and if it's starting to get a little bit uncomfortable or you feel like you know you're a little bit wetter than you usually are and it's starting to like make your underwear uncomfortable all you have to do is get a panty liner pop a panty liner in there and keep it going but discharge is absolutely normal there is nothing wrong with you now this next piece of advice is a piece of, a piece of advice that i would definitely give my younger self especially considering the the way i got my very first period pretty freaking embarrassing but i will just say that if you're around the age of 12 or 13 years old i will definitely say that that time is arriving you are about to start hitting puberty you are about to start becoming a woman you're gonna start developing those little characteristics of a woman and just one one thing one thing that we all have to go through as a woman thanks to eve is <laughs> is periods right so you are going to bleed monthly and even if you do not have your period yet even if you have not had your first bleed i strongly recommend that you either go to your school nurse or go to your mom or go to your big sister go to anyone and ask them for a pad and walk around with it everywhere you go just put it in your bag that way it doesn't matter where you are once you do get that first period you will be prepared you will at least have a pad that you can put on as soon as you start feeling a little bit wet instead of you know just sitting there the wetness and having it like seep through your pants and then embarrassing yourself publicly so always walk with a pad in your bag especially 
for um just to prepare for your first bleed and also watch some videos and watch some videos that teach you how to use a pad so that you know what to do when the time so comes next piece of advice is for my 16 and 17 year old girls out there who might you know who are probably starting to become sexually active this is once again piece of advice that i would definitely give myself my younger self and this is walk with a condom all the time a lot of younger girls are kind of under the impression that because they are not the person who has a penis they should not be the person with a condom it should automatically be the boy but uh, just coming from experience you are going to have a lot of people who are going to give you excuses um guys will tell you that they forgot guys will try to make you feel as though they respect you by telling you you know i i really didn't have the intention of doing this with you tonight i didn't i didn't think that this was going to happen so i didn't walk with one and you might you know feel good and feel special and given don't give in no rubber no play and that is it so go to your school nurse go to the corner store you don't need id for that go anywhere and get yourself either one of those little boxes of three or get yourself at least one and put it in your bag i would say at least two but at least the very very least have one condom in your bag all the time that way if he doesn't have one and he tries to get slick and he tries to convince you it's cool because <laughs> You are lucky tonight. I have one for you. Piece of advice is to get regular STD checks if you can. Definitely go to your clinic and try to get it. I think they, they say that you're supposed to do it once a year. So I strongly recommend that you guys do this. Another thing that I will say also because I got a message from a girl who told me that she kept getting these reoccurring types of symptoms that kind of sounded like BV and kind of sounded a little bit like a yeast infection. But she said she got checked for both. It was not that and that she was having these recurrent relations with this person and every time she had relations with this person she would um she would get these symptoms and one thing that i want to let you guys know is that when you do go get an std check usually they do only check for gonorrhea hiv and um gonorrhea hiv and chlamydia yes gonorrhea hiv and chlamydia those are the three things that they usually check for but there is an std that is starting to become a little bit more common that is only they don't usually check females for it and they don't really check guys for it either but it is called tracheomoniasis and it is it is a, an, an std that is kind of similar to um gonorrhea and chlamydia it can be treated with antibiotics but it can only be trans it can only a man can give it so it is not something that women carry it is something that is only carried by men and they then pass on to women and a lot of women go and they get std checks and they do not get checked for tracheomoniasis so, for tracheomoniasis so i will strongly recommend that when you do go, go get your std check that you ask your doctor if it's possible for him or her to screen you for tracheomoniasis as well and that is spelled t-r-a-c-i m-o-n-i-a-s-i-s -I, -S, I believe google it another piece of advice that i want to give you guys is this and i know a lot of girls get super um hypochondriac then they get super paranoid after they have sex even if they have protected sex and um a lot of girls tend to go to the pharmacy and get um morning after pill regularly even though they are using protection and if you want extra protection instead of going to the pharmacy and consistently taking the morning after pill which can be harsh on your body i recommend for you guys to go to your doctor or go see your school nurse and see if that if you guys can discuss some type of way to get you on birth control instead it is i feel like it is easier on your body although birth control also has its cons but it is um a little less harsh than the morning after pill and if you're just taking the morning after pill every two three days honestly just save yourself the money buy the birth control once a month and just take your pills every day or um discuss going on a different type of birth control if you don't like taking pills maybe you can take the, ch the, the patch or you could take the depot personally i hate the depot so i will not ever um recommend it to anyone but i the patch in my experience has been okay and the birth control i've been on for a really long time um the pills so try out what works for you but definitely go see your nurse and or go talk to somebody about it instead of taking the morning after pill every couple of days that just it just don't make no sense another thing that i definitely want to let you guys know and this is a myth that a lot of older people have been passing down and a lot of people have been 
scaring young women by telling them that tampons takes away their virginity and i am here to tell you as your favorite nurse i am here to tell you that that is not true tampons do not take away your virginity so if you are you know at that age where you're kind of tired of the pads now maybe you're 16 17 years old if you're 12 13 years old i do not recommend for you to use a tampon personally i think you should stick with a pad at least at first but once you get to that 16 17 year old age and you're tired of wearing of sitting down on your wet soaking pad all day long and you decide that you want to you know switch it up and you want to start tampons you can use a tampon and it will not affect your virginity i promise Coming back to tampons another thing that i want to let you guys know and this is back to yeast infections again is stay away from these scented pads and these weird scented tampons I, I promise you it doesn't matter how good your tampon smells it will not make the blood coming out of you smell any better like vanilla and period blood just it just doesn't sound like the most pleasant thing anyway and these scented you know once again once i like i told you guys before all these scented things have these harsh ingredients and putting them up there can throw you off and can cause a yeast infection so having a yeast infection and having your period at the same time just doesn't really sound like the funnest thing so stay away from these scented uh, tampons i i guarantee you if you choose the right tampon and you're not leaking through you will not smell nobody will smell anything and you will be fine just drink water eat well because at the end of the day the way you smell the way your sweat smells the way your piss smells and looks the way everything coming out of your body looks says a lot about the things that you are intaking and putting in your body so if you're eating well you know drinking your water eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables you should be fine every period just stay away from the vanilla and the flower scent the flower scented um tampons and the pads you don't need them and they will throw your ph off and you are going to not only have five five to seven days of bleeding or three to seven days of bleeding but after the bleeding is done you're gonna have another like a week or two of vaginal itching that is just not fun and for my older girls just explore the different options the different things that you can use for your period there are menstrual cups out there which I've never personally tried. Um, I do intend on trying it eventually. Honestly, I, I find it kind of scary. I'm scared that I'm gonna laugh too hard and that shit don't, it's just gonna pop right out. <laughs> menstrual cups are, they are basically these tiny little cups um, that are rubber and you insert them and you bleed into the cup and then you re remove the cup at the end of the day. You throw your blood into the toilet, flush, rinse with hot water and then you reinsert it. So that is a menstrual cup there are tampons there are pads pads with wings pads with no wings if you are using pads i definitely recommend the one with wings i feel like it just makes the pad a lot more stable i noticed that the um the pads that don't have wings sometimes the sticky thing like the sticky type of texture behind the pad starts to wear out and then your pad starts shifting and moving around in your underwear and i don't like it so the wings folding those wings nicely behind your underwear just helps the pad stay nice and stable so that you're not leaking through you into your underwear or into your pants or out of your skirt down your leg during the day another thing that i want to let you guys know is that not every single girl's period is regular so when you do go to sex education class they will teach you that you know girls usually or the average female will get her period every 28 days so 28 days will pass you'll get your period it'll stop and then another 28 days will pass before you get your next period but i just want you guys to know that not everybody's body is like that um i am one of those irregular girls i think i was 20 years old when i went 10 months without getting my period and i've had my period since i was 12 so um, in the beginning, it is normal if you're a little bit irregular when you first get your period because your body is still changing and stuff, especially when you're going through puberty. But if you are past puberty, like if you're after, if you're like late 17s, 18, 19 years old and you still have um, irregular periods, you may want to go to your doctor. I recently found out why my period is irregular and the only thing that's been able to help me regulate my period somehow is birth control so not everybody's period is the same if you are young and it's irregular i wouldn't stress about it i would actually embrace it but if you are older i would definitely say to go get it checked out because something may be going on but something may not be going on i'm not going to say that just because you have irregular period it means something is wrong with you but there could be maybe little tweaks that you can make maybe even in just your diet and your lifestyle that will snap your body right back um, um, to normal so don't worry just take your time but not everybody has a regular Anyways, guys those are just a couple of things that your parents probably never told you i know that this information is very basic for some of you but for some other people they really don't know so for those people i really hope this information was able to help you and give you a better insight on the things that happen in your body and what may be causing those things once again if you ever have that 
you know fishy odor or that um itchy type of feeling down there and you want to know why or things you can do to get rid of it or prevent it i have a full bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections playlist so you guys can definitely go check that out if you um look in the description box and i really hope to see you guys in my next video if you would love to see more content like this once again don't forget to join the family by banging on that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell that way you'll be notified when i post future content i hope to see all of you guys in my next one bye